What's up? Uh, yeah, so I'm going to start off with a cartoon today because I can't seem to do shit else, right? So let's get started with that. Uh, before we get into it, though, I am going to have some picks, actually, a good little list of picks today to choose from. So, again, fair warning, probably do the opposite of whatever the hell I'm doing. I'm actually putting my money on this, and so you guys, you know, y'all don't know me, like I'm just some asshole on the computer, but I'm actually putting money on these things, and they're mostly losing. So definitely do the opposite. I'm really trying to do a public service here. It's like giving you guys money if you just do the exact opposite. So one thing about being on YouTube is you either want to be really good or really bad, and so far I've done a little bit of both. So let's go against you know, whatever the hell I'm saying today. So first of all, like I said, let's get into the cartoon just because I want to, you know, give you a little run through of my life. Like I said, y'all don't know me, so I figured this is pretty much, you know, the best you're going to get. That's a picture of me, live action shot right there. And uh, it's pretty much like every Monday morning, you know, I get up, I start doing some work on computers and, and look at the numbers and whatnot and what happened on Sunday's games and remember what I can about all the games I watched. Because, you know, Sunday, you never actually get to watch, like, all the games straight because someone's bugging me about doing something. Get up and do this, clean that, wipe my ass here, I wipe the cat's ass over there, you know, that kind of shit. So, yeah, that's pretty much my day of I think I can win if I do a bunch of math. And then, Sunday night, I'm always like, damn it, what the hell what kind of bullshit is this? That's pretty much me. That's like literally my expression. It's a very accurate depiction in this one. Uh, this was probably took at least three hours to really get the shading right on this shitty little stick figure I did here. And then after that, it pretty much sums up, you know, the rest of my Sunday afternoon. You know, I could always go fuck myself. And that is actually the motto we're going to roll with for the rest of this week is like, well, yeah, you always go fuck yourself. That's what happens. So. Let's get into it. The last week picks, which went a whopping 0-2, were the Ravens minus 3 and Chargers minus 3. Chargers minus 3. Wrong pick, wrong side. No two ways about it. They did eventually win the game on a two-point conversion. Um, that's about it on that game. They, they were losing pretty much the entire time. I think they led in that game for all of the last 12 seconds, which is great. I like to see the Chargers win. I like to see that fan base happy. And kind of fuck everybody else, right? Just like our motto said. Um, but as far as a betting perspective goes, I really thought that the Cardinals were going to not do as great as far as you know their ability to move the ball. I thought the Chargers were maybe going to get after Kyler Murray just a little bit more, and they maybe be a little bit more aggressive on the offensive side of the ball. Not that I thought they were going to be going downfield or anything, but actually the opposite. I thought they were going to play more of their Chargers style of football, which is a lot of like dink and dunk stuff and maybe get, you know, have Austin Eckler break one, Keenan Allen break one, you know, everybody kind of gets some, some good stuff on the ground. Didn't happen. Um, that's just the wrong side and it happens. Now the Ravens minus three, <laughs> that's much more of an ass whip because it's the exact opposite thing that happened. Um, and really, again, kind of makes you want to just go fuck yourself. So Ravens minus three, Ravens are up seven with about a minute and a half in the game. It's third and five. Jaguars are on their own, like 25 or whatever. And it's like, all right, well, if they can just stop them here, that's pretty much it. You know, maybe they try for fourth down. Maybe that's it. Maybe we can just wrap this up, take a couple knees, get the hell out of here. Nope. Of course not. Not only do they give up the first down, they don't even have to work for it. The Ravens get an offsides give up the first down by a penalty, and then from there on out, could not stop the Jaguars at all. They were like, well, we like overtime. Let's go do that. But that didn't happen. Jaguars go down the field, get the touchdown, and of course, they go for two with only seconds on the clock. They get the fucking two points. They win by one, screwing everybody over and effect effectively telling everybody with, you know, respect, of course, go fuck yourself. So, that's what happened on those two games. One of them just totally wrong side. The other one, right side, decent pick. I actually felt good about that pick pretty much the entire game until those last couple seconds came up. And then the Jaguars, of course, just bent me over with the bottle of Vaseline, and that was not fun. So let's move on from that, shall we? 
And let's get talking about some rest disadvantages. Uh, I don't know if you are aware of this, but we are already in the 14th, I'm sorry, 13th week of the NFL season. So we're pretty far along. The next time you see football, uh, I believe will be in December. Well, besides the Monday night game, uh, Thursday night will be December 1st. So that will be your next NFL game, uh, Bills and Patriots. So keep that in mind because there's a lot of rest disadvantages coming up. Last week for no um, for Thanksgiving, nobody gets the bye week, which is good, right? Because we have the most games. But bad because there have been a lot of teams. Most of the teams in the NFL have had their bye week at this point. And going into week 14, the teams that have not are right here. Atlanta, Chicago, Green Bay, Indy, New Orleans, and Washington. Now, what do you think we want to do against these teams? I'm sorry, week 13, my bad. 13, so those teams have not had it, and also Arizona Arizona and Carolina are on bye this week. So the teams that have not had a bye week yet, that Atlanta-Chicago line, those are the teams we want to pick on. And that's mainly because whether they're injured, they're tired, fatigue, whatever, these guys have not had a chance to have a break yet. It's cold outside now, weather's getting bad. Uh, injuries are starting to pile up. You're seeing depth charts getting all sorts of red all over it. It happens. It's the NFL. And usually that stuff happens around the middle of the season. And these teams that are still competing to get into the playoffs, and you know, obviously most of them are, um, they are going to have to kind of pick and choose where they want to risk taking a player at because they don't want to risk further injury if there's already an injury they don't want to get somebody injured if they're already seeing signs of fatigue all this other kind of crap so who do these teams play what's going on with them well atlanta plays the steelers that's one game i already had circled anyways uh chicago actually plays green bay so we can't really do much with that one indy plays the cowboys and that is a very significant spot and we'll get into that in just a second uh, New Orleans plays the Bucks, so I do like the Bucks in that game. Um, probably not a real play for me, but it's I, something I'm looking at. Uh, and then Washington plays the Giants. So those are the games that we're going to start off looking at. Um, and then there's two more that I'm going to just we're going to throw in there. Actually, there's two more individuals and then one part of a teaser that I want to throw in here. So first, let's start with that Giants game. Uh, it's Giants and Washington and the Giants are plus two as of right now. Now, from a schematic standpoint, Washington has been able to stop the run really effectively. They have also, in turn, been able to run the ball very effectively the last, I would say, five to six weeks at this point. New York relies on their run game for the most part. Now, yes, they have been doing a little bit of uh, trickery, a little, you know, something different on offense because Saquon's been bottled up the last couple weeks, but they would like to rely on their run game, like to rely on Saquon to kind of keep their offense moving and then only have to revert to passing, you know, obvious situations or just to kind of keep the defense honest. But really, their run game is where they want to be at. On the flip side of that, their defense can't stop the damn run. So, it seems like a perfect matchup for Washington. It really does. Washington's offense is perfectly suited to take advantage of the weakness of the Giants. On the flip side, the Washington defense is perfectly suited to take advantage of that Giants shitty offensive line. That is perfect. I love the Washington commanders, commandos, no underwear, whatever, in that game. The problem is, and this is... To me, a bigger issue than I think most people are making out of this, Washington has not had a bye week. They are traveling to New York for this game. Um, Not that that's like cross-country or anything necessarily, but you're talking about a travel spot, and you already haven't had a bye. You're already dealing with some injuries and things like that. Uh, Just kind of scattered around the, you know, around the team. Nothing too significant at least not yet but you have seen a lot of the receivers just kind of petering out the last couple weeks uh terry mclaurin's been okay but guys like curtis samuel have not really been doing a whole lot of anything um some of that is because they haven't really needed him to uh, but also last week against atlanta that's a pretty physical game atlanta is a a physical team they like to run they they're pretty one-dimensional they just like to run the ball 
but that is hard on a defense and it's it, the Atlanta defense while they're not you know necessarily tough in and of their own their you know their own right it makes it a much more grueling game when both teams are just run 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 um you, you get beat up on both sides of the ball even your offensive line you know you get a lot of work in there now maybe they like to, to run block more cuz you're not having to just sit back and you know pass protection um which is good but still it does you get hit more you it's going to take more out of you there's more blindside stuff there's more chops there's more all this other crap that happens um so while I like the Washington team on paper and even through the eye test, I'm only taking them for the first half. The pick in this one is Washington for the first half. It's Washington minus one. So Washington minus two is the full game. Um, I don't hate it if you absolutely want to be on that, but Washington minus one for the first half. The other point of, uh, that I wanted to make out on this is that the Giants have been terrible at starting games the last at least three weeks. Uh, if you look at the first half points, Washington is actually ranked number five right now for the last three weeks. They're averaging about 17 points in the first half, again, for the last three weeks. Now, if you go down to New York, New York only averages about, let's say, nine points in the first half, again, for the last three weeks. Now, one thing that's keep in mind here is that last week they played the Cowboys on Thanksgiving and Dak threw two interceptions in that first half, and that really helped the Giants score, uh, kind of move the ball. So without those additional scores, they don't score 13 in the first half last week. They probably score closer to like seven. Uh, and with that, this average is even just a little bit lower. Now, Washington has had kind of the reverse of that happen. They've had some takeaways. They've got some stops, some fourth down stops, things like that in good field position. So you could kind of say the same thing with Washington. Um it's just that Washington has been pretty consistent. I would say it's not just three weeks. It's probably more like five to six weeks um, in this first half action. Whereas New York, again, same thing. They've been pretty much consistent the full year with around that like seven to let's call it even 10 point first half. It's just the style of play. New York relies, like I said, more on the run game and more on the fact that in the second half, your defensive line and your linebackers are probably going to get a little tired of chasing Saquon all day, and he's going to eventually find a hole. He's going to find something and break off a couple of runs. Um, at least that's what was going on earlier in the season. Haven't had too much success the last week or two, um, but that's kind of where their mentality is at. So, like I said, Giants, Washington. I'm taking Washington for the first half minus one. Um, now, after that play, oh, sorry, one last thing I want to mention on that. The Giants did play Thursday, so they're coming off of like a mini buy. They played for the Thanksgiving game against the Cowboys, so they're definitely coming in with a rest advantage. And all of that again goes into if you're going to see the rest disadvantage for Washington come into play. If you're gonna see guys who are injured, tired, you know, whatever fatigue setting in. It's probably not going to be the first quarter that that happens. Um, it probably won't even be the second quarter. You probably aren't going to start seeing that until the second half of the third quarter, going into the fourth quarter. And I wouldn't be surprised if Saquon ends up putting up a good game but has a quiet first half. Um, that's just kind of the way that the Giants have been rolling out their offense, uh, at least, again, aside from the last two weeks. And I could see that happening again this upcoming week. So Washington minus one for the first half. One other thing I want to touch touch on real quick is I have not updated a whole lot of the algorithm or math or anything like that in the last couple of weeks, guys. And the reason for that is not that I don't want to or that we're not doing it or anything on this end. We are, so keep track of it. It just hasn't really proven fruitful. Uh, for the most part, a lot of those scores and predictions and things, um, I would say over the last like three weeks, they are accurate until about the last four or five minutes of the fourth quarter in the majority of games, like 65 to 70% of games. So if I have a game handicapped at like 24, 21, somewhere in there, that's close to or maybe even exactly the score with like four to five minutes left in the fourth quarter. Um, and it's like, okay, well, this should at least be relatively close to what the prediction was. But nope, you'll have like two scores and a fucking field goal in the last four minutes um, it seems like every single time, and I, I apologize, I don't have the number here in front of me, but in the last two minutes of the half and in the last two minutes of fourth quarter, I think the average point scored this year is something like 
7.5 or something like that. It's just like a little over a touchdown. So odds are if you're in the last two minutes of the, the half or the quarter, there's going to be something, somebody scoring somehow. Um, and that's just the way it is. And in the fourth quarter, obviously, it gets more verse, uh, more volatile because people are obviously trying to win the game or trying to do whatever they got to do to extend the game in that fourth quarter, whereas that doesn't really happen as much in the in the first half. Yes, they still want to score. Yeah, they're still trying to take advantage of whatever. But the first half, you don't have that intense desperation like you do at the end of the fourth quarter. So you're probably going to see a lot of first half picks for me, at least for the, this week and maybe the next coming upcoming weeks. Uh, so anyways, that's the first pick. The next one, we're going to look at the Cowboys and the Colts. So obviously, if the Giants play Thursday, so did the Cowboys. So the Cowboys played Thursday. They're coming off a mini, uh, mini buy. The Colts are playing on a Monday night. So not only are the Cowboys coming off a mini buy, the Colts don't even have a regular off week. They have a short week. Um, and they're going to go play in Dallas on a Sunday night. So the Colts really have their work cut out for them from the rest of advantage perspective again the Colts have not had a bye week the Cowboys have already had their bye week and are now coming off a mini bye week and the Colts are coming off a Monday night game that's a whole lot of rest disadvantage not to mention that you have the Colts coaching staff who's been there for all of three weeks with Jeff Saturday um playing against Mike McCarthy who I think sucks anyways but still it's just it I don't know if or what Jeff Saturday is trying to change or do in the locker room, but I don't think he's had a whole lot of time to execute it, and I I just don't really, I don't trust what's going on with Indy right now. The defense has looked really good, and I'm sure that's going to continue being there. Matt Ryan is making quick decisions. He's getting the ball out, and I think that that's going to be okay moving forward. Um, the Cowboys defense is obviously awesome. They come in with a better rest advantage, and they're going to be playing at home on a Sunday night, and they realize that they're... They're going to be in the opportunity here. They're having the opportunity now to essentially solidify at least that second spot in the NFC East. Um, If the Eagles, and they they have one more game against the Eagles, if the Eagles drop a game, uh, the Eagles do have a, sorry, the Cowboys have a chance to take over the number one spot. I don't think it's going to happen, but if they keep winning, they at least give themselves that opportunity. So with all that rest advantage talk, the Colts, like I said, their defense has been really good. The Cowboys' defense is obviously really good. The, both of these teams like to run the ball. Um, the biggest difference here really comes to their quarterback and the receiving core. Cowboys actually have a receiver. The Colts have a guy who's dressed up as a receiver probably for Halloween and just hadn't taken off the costume. Um, the Cowboys, I think, win this game. But to me, the spread is just too big. I believe it's 9.5 right now. And that's just way too much. Uh, the Cowboys at nine and a half, and you know what? I don't even, they're not even putting the lineup right now. Um, the Cowboys at nine and a half. That offensive, the coaching staff is completely okay taking their foot off the gas with like four minutes left, and I've seen it even with like five minutes left in the fourth quarter. If they have a lead that they that they personally feel is like insurmountable, uh, especially because they know that they have the defense to come up with a stop. They're totally fine going three and out. Just run, run, run. We're going to take our, you know, two and a half minutes off the clock or whatever. We're going to give you the ball back. Uh, Because if they're up by two scores, you saw it last week with the Giants, right? They were up 15. They went run, run, run. Kick the ball back. Here you go. You can have it back. Um, We'll let you struggle as much as you want to get move the ball on our defense. Because it's probably going to take you at least another two minutes anyways. By the time you score... We're going to get the ball back. We're going to take off another two, two and a half minutes. And then after that, then it's up to you to try and score in like 30 seconds. So they already have that in their mind. And so even though you may feel like, wow, you know, nine, nine and a half is probably is not enough, right? The Cowboys should be able to cover that. That you will never feel safe with that um, in this game. I think that Vikings game where the Cowboys beat the hell out of the Vikings is still maybe kind of skewing people's perception of the Cowboys. Uh, That's my biggest win for this year so far because I knew it and I told you guys Vikings could not stop the run. The Cowboys are going to come out. They're going to run, 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 and the Vikings aren't going to be able to do a damn thing about it. And that's exactly what happened. Pollard had two touchdowns. Zeke had two touchdowns. That's not going to be this kind of game. The Colts can stop the run. The Colts can stifle your, your ground game. 
And while CeeDee Lamb can do some work, the Colts' secondary is actually okay, too. Dak is not, like, this amazing quarterback. I don't even think he's, like, top five right now. Um, nine and a half is just way too much for me. What I'm most likely going to do in this game is I am probably going to take the Colts plus the nine and a half because uh, I, in my head, the way that this storyline goes is the Cowboys probably do at some point get a decent lead. It is probably going to be something like 24 to 10 in there, in that range somewhere. Um, and then in the last, you know, like I said, four minutes or so of the fourth quarter, you see the Colts come back. The Cowboys take their foot off the gas. The Colts get a last second touchdown. The Cowboys don't give a shit. They're going to try to kneel out the ball uh, and then maybe just, you know, maybe give their defense like a last minute to just hold them again. That's fine. Either way, I see the Colts covering this spread. Now, because I think it's going to be a low-scoring game and the defenses are going to have so much to do with this, and because Dak can and will make fucking stupid decisions, it's very possible that the Colts get the upset here. Uh, The Colts upset the Chiefs. The Colts barely lost to the Eagles by one point when they shouldn't have. They had a field goal earlier that they had missed. It was like a very makeable uh, field goal. I would not be surprised either if the Colts actually win this game. But because of the rest disadvantage of things, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Colts plus the 9.5. However, if and when the Cowboys get to a spot in live action where it is Cowboys minus 3, Cowboys anything less than that, Cowboys minus 1, maybe at some point if the Colts were to get out to a lead in the first half, um, it could possibly like be Cowboys plus 2.5, plus 3. I'm going to jump on that. I probably won't do that until halftime. So kind of the reverse of what we're doing with the Washington game. Take the full points here with the game at the 9.5 on the Colts. Really, you may even want to wait till you get to Colts plus 10. At halftime, especially if it's tied or if the Colts are winning and you can get the Cowboys like minus 3, uh, then you jump on the Cowboys for the either the remainder of the game or for the second half, depending on what the lines are, again, at Cowboys minus three or better, to get that win. I'm going to be doing that. Now, obviously, I can't make that a pick right now because there's no live line out on it, of course. Um, but just be aware, that's what I'm looking for. I'm taking both sides of this one, and then we're going to see where that falls out um, at the end of this, at the end of the week, obviously. Uh, so that's second pick. Now, the next one here is the Houston-Cleveland game, and this is going to be under for the first half. Now, this isn't a rest disadvantage game. This is a pure spot play. Houston, in the first half of games over the last three weeks, has averaged a whopping one point in the first half. Now, Cleveland is doing better. They're averaging nine points in the first half. However, this is going to be the first game with Deshaun Watson. So, a couple things about that. One, Houston is probably going to treat this as their Super Bowl because for all intent and purposes, it is their Super Bowl. You're most likely going to see the defense come out playing really aggressively, playing as hard as they can, trying to get Deshaun Watson and all that kind of stuff. Coming out just right, your ears pinned back and all the, little, all the other metaphors you hear. Offense, maybe they do something more. Maybe they try to be a little more aggressive. I think they pretty much are what they are, though. Um, I don't know how much more they can do offensively. And to Cleveland, I don't think this is as big of a game for them. I think maybe they they understand the spot that they're walking into, and obviously they're going to go out there and, and you know, try to win. But I don't think this is like a get up spot for them. This is just kind of like a, okay, let's do what we got to do kind of thing. Um, secondly, Deshaun Watson in that first half probably going to be pretty rusty. It's been all like two years now since the dude has actually thrown like a real live football uh, or in a live football game. I mean. It's. I would not be surprised, and we saw him in the preseason not looking great. I would not be surprised at all in that first half if he comes out and just has a shitty performance, uh, puts up a dud. He may have a shitty first game overall, but for sure that first half and the way the story goes in my head, um, he's just not going to have a good-looking first half. And like I said, it's not going to help that Houston's probably going to bring as much pressure as they possibly can uh, in this guy's face. <laughs> They're going to come in his face. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty sure he's familiar with that. Anyways, I just I don't see a whole lot of offense in this game. Um, Houston's probably going to try to run more on offense. Now, the one thing I will say is Cleveland's offense, they want to run. They have Nick Chubb, obviously, and Kareem Hunt. 
Texans are god awful stopping the run. They're one of the worst in the league at stopping the run. Even just by the eye test, if you ever sit down and watch a Texans game, those guys cannot stop the damn run. They can make open field tackles like okay, decently, uh, but it just seems like there's always lanes every single game they play in. Whether it's you know a sweep, it's up the middle, it's whatever. It just seems like every single team they play finds open running lanes like. Every other third run, there's like a 5, 8, 10, 12-yard run because there's just a wide-open lane. So if you're going to give Nick Chubb lines like that, it's going to be a long day. Um, now, that being said, again, that first half probably going to be played pretty tight. The second half, I think, is where you see um, the, the Texans' defense kind of slow down a little bit, maybe get a little fatigued. Like, all right, the, the moment of the game being here is kind of passed. The first half's already done. And then Cleveland's on the other end, you know, if it's a close game, they're going to continue to run as much as they can. Maybe Deshaun Watson gets loose here and there for a couple runs of his own. But, you know, I, the first half to me is what we're expecting to be played very tightly with a lot of emotion, most likely the under. Now, the other thing is, with that first half, you really, both these teams would have to go above and beyond to get to that over because what right now the current line is about 45 for the full game i'm expecting that first half line to be about 21 ish 21 and a half even if cleveland play pays plays above themselves right they beat their average of nine let's say they can get to like 10 or 14 houston still has to give their seven which who knows if they can do that um, and then some to go on the over. So like I said at the beginning of this video, the the NFL world has just been telling me like bend over, you know, every every Sunday. So do the opposite of this. I'm just telling you what's on the paper and what I'm seeing and why I'm going to lose my money this week. So that's what I see in that one. Uh, the next game here, or actually this is going to be the teaser, is the Steelers. From one and a half up to seven and a half. Like I said, the Steelers are playing the Falcons. Again, this is this is a rested disadvantage spot. The Falcons have not had a bye week yet. The Steelers have. Now the Steelers are traveling back to back here, and they're going to be going obviously to Atlanta. Um, so last week wasn't a huge you know road trip for them. This week in Atlanta is going to be a little bit of a further game, but Falcons, like I said earlier, very one dimensional, very much a run heavy team. The Steelers, probably the best thing they do on defense is stop the run. So that does not bode well for the Falcons. And the Falcons um, are also still down. Kyle Pitts, they don't really have another great receiving option. Drake London's been okay. Mariota's really just been asked to not screw it over. Um, and that's, I guess, what he's doing. But even if the Falcons were to win this game, I don't see the Falcons covering a seven-point spread. Um, which is exactly why I'm teasing it. I'm in this game. The Steelers on the other end can run. Obviously, they like to run. Falcons defense is another team that is just god awful at stopping the run. They're almost as bad as the Texans. Um, and pretty much every team that that likes to run, that's a run heavy team, finds success against the Falcons. So I think the Steelers are going to, you know, fit that mold. So with the Steelers having success, at least on paper and through the eye test, it looks like they're going to have some success there. And the Falcons running into a brick wall and kind of playing to their own disadvantage, uh, that's going to be an issue. Now, the Steelers are coming off a Monday night game where the Falcons obviously have a full, you know, regular week. But I think that's kind of negated by the fact that the Falcons have not had a bye week yet. So these guys are probably going to be kind of at the end of their ropes when it comes to, like, you know, getting up for another game here, especially because they are going into their bye week after this week. Uh, maybe they're, they, you know, they get up for the game because they know it's the last one. But I, I got to say, if you have done any sort of working out or playing sports or anything, even like in the high school level, you should know after like six, seven, eight weeks of doing this stuff, working out in the gym every day, Monday through Friday at least, you know, one, two hours, you're doing you know, crazy amounts of like cardio, lifting, hitting each other, whatever. Even if you're not physically injured, even if not some like something's not broken or sprained or whatever, you're like 
in okay health condition, you start to just get tired. You start to just get like fatigued easier. You know, it's it's easier to get an injury. Uh, you just maybe you're got like not as focused. You're like oh, fuck. Like, give me a wake off. That kind of shit happens. So give me the Steelers plus seven and a half. On the other end of that teaser, though, I'm going to be taking the Ravens again. Going back to the well. Um, going back to the chick that gave you cl- cl- chlamydia. And this week they're playing against the Broncos, and that's really the only reason I'm taking them. The Broncos have not been able to do anything offensively. Uh, they really just cannot get their shit together. The coach doesn't know what the hell he's doing. That team is just a damn mess. Now, the line is eight. The reason I'm not taking the Ravens by themselves is I don't see them covering a big spread either. The Ravens are another one of these teams, and a lot of NFL teams are. A lot of the good teams this year in the NFL are teams that will win, but they're not going to win by margin. All of these teams seem like they're doing enough to get the win. They're going to do enough to kind of hold on to the win, but they're not going to really go above and beyond to cover a spread. They're not trying to beat the hell out of anybody. They're just trying to stay healthy, and maybe that's because of the extra week. Um, and they know that they're having to keep their players healthier a little bit longer. And on the playoff side, they know even if they make the playoffs, there's only one team that gets a bye week now. It's not like it used to be with two teams. Or maybe that's what it is. People, Teams are just kind of more conscious of, like, we prefer to keep people healthy instead of trying to win by, like, 20 points if we're not up by, like, 20 in the first half. So give me the Ravens, minus two, the Ravens offense, um, can do a little bit of everything, and I think that they can find those holes against the Broncos. Broncos are pretty good about keeping everything in front of them, but they really haven't played a running quarterback like Lamar Jackson because there's really not anybody out there like Lamar Jackson. And when you're going to rely on your defense to do most of, if not all, the work for you, it concerns me that you have to, when you play a running quarterback because you're going to have to pick something to give up. Either you're going to try and stop the run and you're going to put everybody up front and then you're going to you know, make sure somebody's either spying or, or kind of at least staying in zone to keep an eye on the quarterback. Or you're going to just send forward, try to contain him and give him more time to find somebody down the field or find a running lane. So I don't think the Broncos are going to be able to stop everything. I think the Ravens, maybe they get stifled a couple times and end up getting some more field goals uh, from Justin Tucker like they did last week. But that's fine. That's why it's only two. It's not three. So give me see this plus seven and a half, Ravens minus two. And then the last two picks here, guys, uh, and these are just strictly spot plays as well. We have Miami plus three and a half against the 49ers, Chiefs minus two and a half at the Bengals. Both of these picks are for the exact same reason. It's because Miami and Kansas City both start their three-week uh, road trips this year or this week. And let's take a look. It is 56% of the time that the team starting their three-week road trip covers in the first game. Now, the Chiefs playing at Cincinnati, uh, uh, less than a field goal. So you're having a cover by less than a field goal. The Bengals have looked good, put up a lot of offense, and that's awesome. But they really haven't um, played a caliber of competition like the Chiefs in a while. The Steelers are really good on defense. Obviously not the Chiefs when it comes to offense. Uh, This could be somewhat of a shootout, but I I don't know how much the Bengals can do, especially if Jamar Chase ends up not playing in this game. Give me the Chiefs minus 2.5. Also give me the the Dolphins plus a a 3.5 at the 49ers. 49ers are really good. Obviously, they've had a great couple weeks. They have so many damn weapons with Debo and Ayuk and Caffrey and Kittle now. Um, I think the issue here is that Miami's defense can also kind of get after those guys with just a simple zone, and they may even try to put some pressure on Garoppolo. Now, I'm not saying these are huge plays because, again, at the end of the day, these are more spot plays. I may do like a half a unit or a quarter unit on both of these, but I do believe that both these teams have a chance to not just win, but convincingly win against both of these teams and make their own make their names known for that playoff race. Obviously, the Chiefs we already know about. <clears throat> the Dolphins have been kind of wishy-washy this year. We have people that really like them, people who think that maybe they're just a little bit fraudulent. They've had a couple, you know, easy wins. I think both of these teams get up for their competition this week. Uh, Miami plus a three and a half. Playing at the 49ers, I don't know what the 49ers are going to do to stop Tyreek Hill. Uh, I think that's the biggest mismatch in that game. The Bengals-Chiefs game, 
Obviously, it's Travis Kelsey. It's pretty much always Travis Kelsey. Now, the Bengals may have some other weapons that they can kind of throw back at the Chiefs. But at the end of the day, give me Patrick Mahomes, better offensive line, and uh, Travis Kelsey versus the Bengals and Joe Burrow, who may or may not be running around for his life in this game because I do see the Chiefs dialing up a lot of blitzes to get in his face. So that's it, guys. That's all the picks for this week. So one more time, it's going to be uh, Cowboys, I'm sorry, Colts plus nine and a half, looking for the Cowboys live spot. Giants plus two. Steelers plus seven and a half, teased with the Ravens minus two. Miami plus three and a half. The Chiefs minus two and a half. And then Houston Cleveland under, and again, I believe that's going to be 21 or 21 and a half for the first half. So those are the picks, guys. Thanks again. Have a great day. Good luck this week. Good luck tonight if you're putting the game, putting any money on the Monday night game. And I'll see y'all next time.